everyone. Welcome to Shell Sugar Rush. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm going to be making this adorable baseball cake for my nephew's birthday and I thought I would take you along on that journey. So if you want to see how I make this adorable cake, stick around. And if you enjoy videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload more videos in the future. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with some red fondant and I'm mixing a little Tylos powder with that just to firm it up a little faster and I'm going to use these molds that I've got from Amazon and they're just um, small alphabet mold and then one is a numerical mold that also has happy birthday in it. So I'm just going to fill in the letters I want with the red fondant and I'm going to use um, actually a paring knife to take off the excess fondant. I find that that's kind of the best tool to use when um, taking the extra fondant off, um, just because you want something that's gonna go through quick and easy and be sharp enough not to pull your fondant back out of the mold. Um, and then I'm gonna pop those in the freezer for a little bit as well, because uh, they are so small, I want them to definitely firm up very well so that they'll be easier to come out of the mold without stretching any. So now I'm going to actually take my Rice Krispie Treats and I'm going to use Rice Krispie Treats for the baseball and the bat that I will be putting on top of the cake. So I find that this is better than just rolling a ball of fondant because for one thing the ball of fondant gets very heavy and not only that but nobody wants to eat a ball of fondant. So with the Rice Krispie Treats it makes a, a nicer little treat to take off the cake and eat. And so I'm going to roll the Rice Krispie Treat into a ball, just uh, smoothing it the best I can. And then I'm going to take some more and make the bat. Um, now, of course, I realized my bat was a little short, so I actually added some more to it just to give it a little more length. And then I, you know, just continued to roll it and kind of smooth it out the, as best I can and um, prepare it for that uh, bat shape for the top of the cake so at this point i'm going to just kind of put it aside and i'm going to start rolling out some brown fondant now i did choose to mix some dark brown and light brown fondant i kind of wanted to um, give that fondant a little bit of a swirl look with the two colors just to give it maybe a real wood look so I've just rolled those together and rolled it out fairly thin um, because you just don't want a lot when you're covering these. Um, you just need a thin coat. So I'm just gonna roll it up and then take my kitchen shears and just slice off that excess fondant. This will help give us a nice um, smooth side where that cut was and it'll come together you know, quite nicely. So once it's good and smooth, then I'm actually taking a little piece of the brown fondant and just rolling it up into a ball and flattening it out for the end to mimic that fat look. So now I'm going to take some white fondant and roll that out um, fairly thin again to cover the baseball. And again, like I said, you just, you just want a thin coat on this. You don't need anything thick to cover that baseball. So I'm just gonna cover it real well and bring all the sides to one, all the edges to one side, and then take my kitchen shears again and just cut off that excess and you know smooth everything down real good. Um, and once I feel like I have it nice and smooth, then I will set this aside and start on the next piece. So, now I'm going to roll out some brown fondant to make the baseball field. So again, I don't want this to be real thick because I am going to be layering the baseball field. So I'm going to just roll it out and just roll it out pretty thin there. And then I'm going to take one of my square cutters, my largest one, and just cut that, uh, cut that square out. This cutter is actually gonna give us the perfect size for the first layer of the field on top of the cake. So I'm gonna take off that excess there and while I have the brown out, I'm gonna go ahead and actually cut out a small circle for the pitcher's mound. And I'm just gonna use the bottom of one of my medium-sized piping tips to cut that out with. And then I'll just set that aside 
and I'm gonna go gonna go ahead and roll out some green fondant and again I want to roll this out pretty thin because I am stacking these layers and I just don't want it to get too thick on top of the cake so I'm gonna roll out the green and I'm gonna use another square cutter and this is gonna be my next size down it's about a half inch smaller all the way around but it's gonna be perfect for layer um, for cutting out and putting that grassy layer on top of the brown. So once I get this cut out, I'm also gonna go ahead and just take, um, take out a couple of the corners for the bases. And I'll just take out um, the corners that will be visible um, on the top of the cake. So I'm just doing that with a paring knife. And once I've got that done, then I'll go ahead and um, put my pitcher's mound on top of the field as well uh, since I've got that piece ready to go and then I'm going to roll out some white fondant and go ahead and cut out my bases now for this I couldn't really find anything square that I could just kind of punch out a couple squares with so I kind of just did the white fondant freehand with my paring knife um, which was simple enough since I only had to cut out two squares for the bases. So again, like I said, I just rolled them out real thin because um, like I said, we're stacking here. So um, and just cut out, cut them out freehand and then attach them to the field. And that gives us our bases for our baseball field. And now we've almost got this piece ready to go. So now I'm going to start with the lines um, that I'll be putting on the cake and I want the lines to you know mimic a baseball so I'm going to cut out of my red fondant I'm going to cut a couple of just long thin red lines and then I'll of course cut out some we'll call them darts as well to mimic the stitching on the baseball so I probably probably had to cut out about 30 of those um, just to make sure I have enough to go around the visible areas of the cake. These were actually a little tedious and took a good bit of time to cut out just because I needed so many and also they had to be kind of angled to you know mimic those stitches on the baseball. So once I got these cut out you know I just put everything to the side and started to prepare um, started to prepare for my birthday banner and um, I pulled out my letters for the birthday banner and of course like I said I had them in the freezer so which worked out very well and I started pulling them out they come out so much easier when you pop them in the freezer and I will tell you you do have to work really fast with them because once you pull them out of the freezer they will soften up pretty quickly so I'm popping them all out of here and then I'm going to kind of get them ready to set up and do a little background for the banner. So um, now I've decided to use blue for the background. So um, I'm going to roll out some blue fondant and just going to kind of take a look here and kind of space my letters out. Um, you just always want to lay them out before you start attaching things. Um, just because it's it's more difficult to move them later now I will tell you I did adjust these probably three or four times before I was really happy with um, the fact that they were laying where I was pleased so you know and with having three rows and it, it's pretty easy uh, with the happy birthday I'm kind of used to those those two words but with a name you know different names you know have different amounts of letters so of course once I got the happy birthday laid out then I started to lay out the name and decide exactly how much space I needed you know for that so I finally got everything on here and uh, again you can tell as the of course time goes by the letters do get softer the more you work with them um, that you know that firmness from the freezer doesn't last very long at all but eventually I did get them where I wanted them and I was happy with the placement. And then of course I had to find something to cut out the shape because nothing that I had, none of my round cutters were big enough for this. So um, I finally, after searching, figured out that 
my sifter the actual the bottom of it was perfect to go around this so i actually used my sifter to cut out the circle around the words for the banner um, and then i just kind of cleaned up the edges a bit and uh, that was ready to go it definitely makes things so much easier when you do all of your fondant details prior to getting your cake ready because once you've got your cake frosted and chilled then it just takes no time at all to just get everything on there so um, now I'm actually going to take my baseball and I've got a, an edible red marker that I'm going to use for the stitching on the baseball this was just so easy because I literally could just lay that tip down um, where I wanted this the stitching look on the baseball so I'm going to finish up the baseball and then I'm going to start putting my cake together so once I've got this where I want it to be and I think it's looking pretty good now I'll be ready to do that for the cake vanilla was requested so I have baked three layers of my favorite vanilla cake and of course I'm using just a vanilla um, flavored American buttercream uh, on the cake. So I am filling in the layers of each cake and just making sure going along, going around and making sure everything is straight and even along the sides as I stack these. Um, that's really important as you go because you don't wanna have to worry about trying to straighten up a cake after you have already coated it. So now I've got everything stacked up and filled and I'm just going to give it a nice um, nice generous coat for the crumb coat um, I do like to start with a good bit because for the crumb coat you will scrape a good bit off um, so you know that's so you do want to be generous with the icing and um, I'm just gonna go around and give it that nice thick coat then and grab my bench scraper and start smoothing down the sides and uh, taking some of that excess off and then we're gonna pop it in the fridge and give it a little chill and then of course I'll bring it back out and work on that final coat so now I've got it out of the fridge and I'm gonna go ahead and apply of course another generous amount um, amount of the buttercream around the sides I'm not so much worried about the top because you know I did put a good um, a nice generous layer on when I did the crumb coat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, finish up this final coat and smooth everything down. I always like to go back. I'll look for little areas where I feel like there's a little dent in there. Um, I do wanna have a nice smooth coat for that base coat. Um, just because you, know, you always wanna have a good base to lay all of your stuff on um, before you start putting on those decorations. So, and I'm gonna just clean off the top. And I like to do this using my offset spatula. You know, I just carry it around from outside to the inside. And of course I'll, you know, add a little extra buttercream anywhere where I feel like there's some little indentions in the top sides as well. So once I feel like that's good and smooth, then we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the fridge um, for that final chill before we start to put on our fondant decorations. So we're back and ready for our fondant decorations. So I'm going to start with, of course, I like to look around the cake and see where I want the front of my cake to be. And I'm usually gonna pick just the smoothest side with the sharpest edge and put that uh, birthday banner in that spot. And then I'm gonna take my red stripes that I made and I'm gonna lay those on the cake and I'm kind of putting them on in a little curved motion there just because you know I do want this to mimic the stitching on a baseball. Now one thing I did realize through this process was that with the red stripes it really would have been better to kind of cut them out later or either not use the same fondant with the Tylos powder um, that I mixed in. Uh, I did cut the strips out of that same red fondant with the Tylos powder in it so they did firm up quite a bit while they were um, sitting aside waiting for the cake to be decorated so they were a bit fragile um, and you know that's something that would have been alleviated by just using a fresh, fresh piece of fondant for this part um, but overall I mean they did 
come out um, fine in the end. So, you know, I was pleased with them. Um, they were just a little more difficult to work with because of that reason. So I'm going to go ahead and put the field on top. And you can see here that was just, it was the perfect fit for the top of the cake. And I'll put my baseball bat on um, as well as my baseball and just find the perfect placement for that. And then I'm going to start just adding those little darts uh, for the stitching around the cake. Now this part was a bit time consuming because there were so many little pieces to put on the cake to give it that stitched look. Um, and I did realize somewhere along the way that all of my stitching was going in the same direction. And of course, to give it that look of the baseball, the true baseball look, one side should have been going in one direction while the other side should have been going in the opposite direction. But I'm the only one who really noticed that, so it turned out okay in the end. So once I've got the stitching all finished up, I'm going to take some of my leftover buttercream and just color it with a green, a actual leaf green gel color. And this is going to be for the grassy area that I'm going to create around the bottom of the cake. Um, now, one thing I do want to say here is uh, I realized that I couldn't find um, my piping tip that creates that little grassy look. It's the one with the flat top and all the little tiny holes in it. So I just ended up taking a Ziploc bag and poking some holes in it with um, my flower nail. And I just put the buttercream into the Ziploc bag and just kind of held it together, twisted it up a little bit and went around the bottom of my cake. Um, just piping some some of that green buttercream to look like a grassy area around the ball field. Um, it actually turned out pretty good. Uh, there, you know, when you're missing something, there's usually a way to improvise. Um, just have to be creative with it. But uh, overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, guys. So here's our finished baseball cake. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And if you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll see more videos like this when I upload them in the future. Thank you for your support. See you next time.